It's all right. I'd like to begin by uh, thanking Holly Solomon for uh, consenting to uh, converse with me tonight. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes. And um, I have a number of questions I'd like to ask. And I suppose the way we'll do this is we'll just I'll ask a couple of questions and maybe we'll uh, get off to having a conversation of some sort. And uh, then we'll open it up to the audience at some point. How did you do that? You just have to. Watch the glass. All set. Thank you. Yeah. Unless you have an introductory statement you'd like to make. No, I'm okay. just waiting. Um, what I wanted to ask you was uh, if you read um, Elizabeth Hess's article a couple of weeks ago in the, New in the Village Voice, uh, The Mauling of Soho. No, I didn't. Okay. But I'm willing to be told what she wrote. Uh, oh, you can't hear? Sorry. Um, well, The Mauling Soho was an article she wrote. I think I really glanced at it. Yes. Uh, oh. Apparently, uh, uh, she feels, and rightly so, that uh, Soho is not a very hospitable place for uh, artists and galleries. And uh, soon artists will be uh, f well, they're already forced to move out, and perhaps soon galleries will be following them. Um, I just wonder what you thought of that, you, since you moved. Uh, to 57th Street at one point and then moved back to Soho. And that was a very significant move in itself. Uh, would you ever contemplate leaving Soho again if? Uh, no, if I move out, I'll move out of the whole art world, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. No, one, it was a big move. Um, I feel that art is about those people who care to see it, all right? Um, I can't delve into people's minds and hearts. I don't know why people come to galleries. Um, and I don't really care. As long as you move certain people, um, that's what counts, no? So if they come to shop and have a lunch and maybe find something that they care about, that's fine. Well, um, the impression that I got from her article was that this is more than just about shopping, about, about, about boutiques and restaurants. It was about the neighborhood being um, uh, redefined. It was once defined by artists and galleries. Oh this boy, it happened 20 years ago. I mean, if we want to go about the evolution, uh, I remember renting a loft in 1969. It was $120 per month, the size of the space, all right? Um, it was, you couldn't get anyone to come here. Uh, from uptown. I used to get drunk on Saturday so I could call people and say, please come down, <laughs> you know? And that was really dreadful. I mean, artists put up shows and I show work. Uh, I want people to see it. I want them to share in this experience. Of course, then um, by 1979, I counted you know, I remember Ivan Karp, my next door neighbor, ran over and said he had, he counted 10,000 people that Saturday. And I thought, well, half of that maybe came into my gallery. And it really did become unmanageable at a certain point. You know, New York Magazine uh, discovered Soho and um, it was really unmanageable. You couldn't really show work, you couldn't sell work. I mean, you were just a traffic cop at that point. Um, I remember I put up a sign and it said, no strollers, no skateboards, no um, rollerblades. And then at the end of the day, somebody wrote, no people. <laughs> and I finally wrote, good. <laughs> you know, like, 